hello traders it's samurai trader here welcome to this training session this members Q&A in this session today I'm going to be covering a lot of questions from members from a lot of emails and uh, as always of course the strategies we discuss let me say that again the strategies we discuss are suitable for futures Forex and stocks so if I refer to a futures chart just remember it's just as applicable if it's on Forex or stocks very very important any good trading strategy should work on any market where you've got volume and where you've got a trading range now as always I want you to have the mindset of this and I know that I repeat this in every members Q&A session my job as a coach is to guide you is to motivate you and perhaps to drill into you to do these things first of all have that mindset what can I learn from this traders just that one idea you pick up today may change your trading career I know that which whatever book I read uh, even if I've read it five times before whatever training webinar I watch or course I attend or manual I read I always pick up at least one or two good ideas and just having that mindset makes a massive difference so what can I learn from this session today how can I use this remember traders just that one idea take notes now if I bring up a term or an idea or something you're not sure just google it or look on YouTube but remember we've got to be very very cautious of what I call the, the shiny object object syndrome that is constantly jumping from one strategy one idea to another very very important that you focus and remember of course repetition is the mother of all learning so I want you to take notes and I know you've all seen this before on the right hand side you can see there my notebook sorry if we had a pause just then but there's my trusty notebook as we go through uh, uh, these sessions jot it down in a notebook not a pad now over a period of time and I know most of you have seen these before uh, you'll end up with dozens of these notebooks and, uh, and if we just go back to that what I do is I'll rule it down and really important points I can then highlight you'll see the pink highlight this is something I need to review again and it just makes a massive difference and in my plastic folders I've got my pattern book so I've got my trading rules and highlighted as I trade I'll flick from one page to another this does a number of things it keeps me focused it reminds me of things that I sometimes forget very very important so take good notes don't use a notepad which you've got paper up um, uh, slips of paper all over the place it just makes a mess and you'll lose focus so I'd recommend you go down to Staples or wherever you do your shopping and buy the spiral binders and date them it's very hard for you to see there but you'll see up in the corners there I'll date these pads as I go and I'll review them regularly particularly as I'm sitting there trading okay moving right along of course I do need to put up the disclaimer there is a risk in trading uh, you've all seen this before if you haven't read this for a period of time please do okay tip number one I talk a lot about a fanning of the EMAs and we're going to be looking at some charts very quickly today as well but the the steeper of a slope the better we are okay for for signifying or identifying or confirming a trend particularly when you have this on your entry and your anchor chart so just always keep in mind you're looking for this trend be very very cautious when you see your EMAs sideways it's what I call the danger zone we want a trending market another thing that's come up a lot particularly this uh, last week or so is traders that use time based charts we are going to be looking at a one three and a five minute in a moment uh, some specific questions from a member in the end find the type of chart you feel comfortable with uh, one of our members here says he really likes time based charts uh, stick with it if you're good at that if you've always used time-based charts or you feel more comfortable stay with that now say if you're thinking okay I like the look of Renko but I'm not sure if you've got multiple screens have uh, time-based charts on one and have your Renko on another likewise if normally you trade with a tick have a tick chart up and your Renko uh, 
you see one of the challenges with Renko is they can move uh, the the Renko bricks can move very very quickly and it's nice to have a tick chart uh, if you've always used a tick chart up next to it so in the end go with what feels comfortable now just remember traders if it walks like a duck quacks like a duck it is a duck meaning at times you're going to get set up that look very very close trading is not a, usually a game of perfect close enough is usually good enough if you're trading a trendy market and things like that and we'll come to a couple more things that about that in a moment now the other thing here is if trading has not been kind to you up till now trend trade only trading's really easy buy dips and sell the rallies the trend is my friend mark up when you have a t20 that is where you've got the eight crossing through the 34 and we're about to look at an email some questions there from a member from Paul uh, Paul you're talking about using a 21 EMA channel rather than the 34 do you know what they all work there are dozens of combinations that work just very very important is go back and test it over 100 trades as a minimum sample but if you're a newer trader what you want to do is get into a trend as early as you can that's where you maximize your profit potential so what is the trend direction of my anchor chart what is the trend direction of my entry chart and if we get in after a t20 that is when the 8 crosses through the 34 which coincides with a CCI 50 CCI zero line crossover usually we've got a new trend now you can use a 21 when you use a 21 EMA that is the 8 crossing through the 21 it's a lot choppier so yes you can get into a move earlier but you'll be chopped up uh, uh, a lot quicker um, now it can still work really well to just remember there's a trade-off likewise if you're using a one minute chart over say a five minute chart or a 15 minute or if you're using an 89 tick chart over a 233 tick chart with a lower time frame you're going to have a lot more what we call noise okay you'll have a lot more false moves likewise in using an 8 crossing through a 21 instead of a 34 right you'll be chopped around a little more but once again stick with the trend now the market has a memory and this is the very reason why you want to start marking up on your charts using your trend lines type on the chart uh, comments as you see them use your notebooks because in the end what you're looking for is patterns that are repeating continually such as an ascending or a descending triangle you see them in the market every single day now we know the market what it's really doing is when you have an ascending or descending triangle or even a wedge you've got the pressure is building prices um, are starting to what we call coil and you know you're going to have a breakout likewise when you see your EMAs sideways sideways action get ready because you know 99% of the time you're going to have a breakout in one direction or another so you want to start to mark those up you want to welcome them because you know you're about to get a good move now a question that comes up regularly and I've covered this in many Q&A sessions is how do we stay in a trade longer well we can use an ATR stop and flip now the ATR stop and flip that I use I only have four trade station by the way All right but there's lots of indicators out there simply um, what you might do is ATR stop and flip for ninja trader google it uh, look and always put in free because quite often you'll find a lot of these indicators you don't have to buy right so google them and put in there free okay first because you'll be surprised what comes up and most trading platforms are there are traders forums such as MT4 ninja 7 ninja trader 8 uh, you know there's lots of platforms out there and quite often you'll find many members of these forums will give away their indicators free of charge so if you don't have some of the things that I talk about you can soon create them or find them so let me just quickly show you this let me just uh, where are we here let's just quickly go to this um, uh, 
right right here and let me just turn some off traders because it will move there we go all right what I've got here on my chart these little black dots you can perhaps see right there and let me just get that there these black dots you can see this is a parabolic st stop and reverse you can adjust these virtually every trading platform has a parabolic stop and reverse for this I've got 0 0.1 all right now just experiment with these as an example you can stay in a trade as long as you're under the black dots likewise I've got here the ATR stop and flip that's the red dots you can see and the blue dots you can see now you can adjust these and make them more sensitive once again the more sensitive they are um, the greater the chance you're going to get what we call whipsawed or kicked out of a trade so you may remember on that PowerPoint I had the ATR uh, stop and flip which is these red ones so you can actually stay in your trade as long as you have read likewise even if you exited this trade I have a re-entry here where that black dot is and by the way these black dots are nothing more than what we call the rule of one or what I call the rule of one for Renko now you may remember that I have the rule of two for range charts on Renko because the the candle does not plot until the second one has started to move um, uh, it's I, I call it the rule of one that's what these black dots are the white candle of course is the super scalper but it's really superseded by this rule of one so as soon as I have these one two three four five green candles the first red one that forms I can short there one of your trading rules may be I do not short until the uh, ATR stops and flips which would be here or the parabolic stops and flips all right these are just techniques you can stay in to use to stay in. now the other one is to use the what I call the trigger line 8 which is the blue 8 EMA uh, a question is comes up can you use a 9 can you use a 10 could you use a 5 yes you can use any combination I find the 8 works really well for me but does it mean that it's any better than the 9 uh, EMA maybe not but remember find something that looks good feels good and stay with it long term what we've got to be very careful of traders is this business of uh, flipping from one concept to another moving from one to another uh, and in a moment we'll, we'll look at some questions here from Paul one of our members and he asked about I'm wondering if you've done research on something like the 5 crossing the 13 EMA cross with the long-term stochastic support um, Paul yes it works brilliantly so you can use the 5 EMA crossing the 13 but is it any better than the 8 crossing the 34 or being under the 21 uh, we've got a very successful CL trader up in Canada that uses the 513 crossover that is if the 5 crosses under a downtrending uh, 13 EMA he will short the market likewise if he's in an, uh, an uptrend if the 5 EMA crosses through the 13 EMA he will go long now I notice here Paul on yours you say MA cross well is you know you'll notice there are some subtle differences in the way an EMA and an MA is calculated but they're subtle uh, is one any better than the other well maybe one or two points but just go back and, and just uh, test that so getting back to this here you've got your parabolic stop and flip your ATR you've got your 8 EMA now as long as I'm under the 8 EMA I stay short and it's not till I get across here above see how I've got to close above the 8 EMA it's okay I'll exit here just be aware that on Renko now this is CL this is a two pip uh, Renko or, or two tick whichever market you're trading is I'm looking really ideally for a close above it now what if I said okay I'll stay until I get my first reversal candle well here's my next entry here where I've got the rule of one plots down my ATR supports it I could jump in my stop would go one or two ticks above the swing high likewise if I entered here where's my stop go ideally one or two ticks above there going back to our PowerPoint so use the trigger line 8 some 
traders may use the 21 EMA we'll just go back to the charts here for a moment and the 21 EMA is my brown line here all right so I could have got in here got out here stayed in stayed in stayed in maybe got out there or there definitely out here to get these longer runs now I'm a scalper I like to get in get the cash register and get out get the cash registered ring the way I look at it I can always get back in does that mean it's better than the traders that go for the higher targets traders scalping also can be a bad habit in many ways I'd love to stay in for a lot more bigger moves it's a habit I've got though so um, but it works for me so find a style that works well for you some traders may if they're trading say multiple contracts may take half off it once they get three four five ticks profit and let the rest run find a concept but you need to test it over a minimum of 100 trades going back to our PowerPoint you can also do what we call a two candle stop that is trail your stop two candles at the high of the candle if you're going if you're short or at the low of the candle and lift it up as you go now many trading platforms also will um, allow you trail by percentage um, they, once again have a look at you most trading domes have got multiple exit strategies built in find something that works but in the end simple is best I like to keep things fairly simple remember test any trading idea over a minimum of 100 trades and always think work worst case meaning if something is marginal uh, let's just say oh yeah that looks like a winner I think it would have been I think mark it down as a loss all right because you're going to have slippage you're going to be in late uh, we have this natural tendency quite often to be thinking on the positive side we want to think negative when we're doing our back testing be realistic don't be overly pessimistic but um, uh, just be fair in doing your back testing very very important another important thing here and we'll look at some danger zones here is do I have a fanning of the EMAs on both the EC and the AC in a moment when we look at the one three and five minute time frames on the EC and most of you know that I use Renko tickle range but for those that are, and it really doesn't matter what you're looking at do I have the EMAs fanning apart on both okay now it means that we're not going to get as many trades but you'll get a lot more quality trades so just jot that down on your list do I have a fanning of the EMAs one of the most important factors you want to be asking so Paul who sent this in thanks Paul for this and um, I just want to uh, um, uh, put this down let's see I don't mean to be one of the impatient doing a lot of sim trading optimal setups for using the trade entry uh, let's see I brief um, let's see now number one here you're in a pretty sizable financial halt traders um, you hear me talk a lot about this beware of trading with what I call scared money if you're looking at digging yourself out of a hole with a limited account uh, you're gonna quite often set yourself up for failure you've got to be very very cautious traders of trading with scared money which means that if you have a loss is that going to be devastating because what it tends to mean generally is you hesitate so you need to do a lot of work on this when it comes to what we call the head stuff and Steph uh, I was going to bring this up later but we may as well bring it up now is and we'll cover it again with your questions but I just want to bring this up on my Google Drive traders there is a number of folders I want you to uh, to go through these and study these and um, I think it was Tony Robbins once said this or it might have been Jim Rowan actually he said you need to work harder on yourself than what you do on your job or your career we need to work harder on the head stuff the mental stuff many of you know I'm a huge NLP fan because with NLP you can get lasting change very very quickly so go through these and two excellent books awaken the giant within by Tony Robbins if you don't own the um, the hardcover book uh, here is the ebook here uh, get the life you want by Richard Bandler one of the founders of NLP both excellent books but go through all of these and start to learn these maybe 
you know say if you're doing um, a, a three hours of back testing a day make it 90 minutes and do 90 minutes working on yourself that's more important than anything else the other area I want you to work on and go to is the trading psychology now where is that here I've got a folder here on trading psychology if you if you keep noticing a pause I keep getting this cough so I keep pausing um, so in the trading psychology there's uh, Mark Douglas's book uh, the disciplined trader there's some great stuff here by Van Tharp um, however you pronounce his name let me just um what else we got trade like a cheater great little article there the disciplined trader you got trading in the zone the the best one in my opinion here is the disciplined trader I believe it should be every traders Bible but it's also great to read about market wizards now remember traders that uh, there are literally I have literally dozens of ebooks uh, in my uh, library here so to find most of them if you go to new member downloads go to the folder new member downloads and there is a zip folder somewhere here trading ebooks where there are dozens of ebooks in there as well okay so the trading ebooks it's in the folder new member downloads but the key ones are in trading psychology and the discipline trader you need to make these your Bible once again work harder on yourself than what you are on your trading very very important so it gets back to a lot of the things here of swapping and changing jumping from one strategy to another now what Mark Douglas says it's very very important that we find one strategy that is pattern based we master one strategy we go over 100 trades where rather mathematical it's a pattern because we can see those patterns and pick those patterns this is very very important that we do this so study those so let's go through some of these questions so it sounds some of the recordings we have 20 to 30 trade possibilities in a trading session I trade 6 e for the most does it has nothing like 20 or 30 what we've got to remember traders is the lower the time frame we go down yes we'll have more opportunities but you'll have more stop outs you get a lot more noise and remember if we're scalping for only say 10 pips if we're trading Forex or three or four ticks if we're say trading the futures market you're going to pay a lot more in commissions and commissions can be a big burden on your trading account so getting back to this here I wonder I wonder if I've done the research on the five we've done a lot of research in the past on the five crossing the 13 EMA it, it works great it does work brilliantly and you could trade that but so does the eight EMA with the 34 it comes down to what you feel comfortable with but very very important find a strategy I don't think they're any better than um, each other but it works five crossing the 13 now uh, I've also experimented with the 21 EMA channel rather than the 34 have I tried that in the past yes just to get more noise can you use a 21 EMA channel instead of a 34 channel absolutely all right just remember the lower the time frame the more uh, false entries or potential false entries you will have now with that just on creating a channel I've had a couple of members uh, and I think it might have been Merle you asked about the 34 EMA channel for ninja trader 8 well I don't have that as a EA or as an indicator but let me quickly tell you traders how to set up a, a channel to set up a 21 or a 34 whatever type of EMA channel you want to have it's simply a matter of overlaying three EMAs on your chart now under the EMA settings you would set one to the low of the candle you put another EMA on there set it to the high of the candle and of course whatever length so say if it was a 34 EMA channel you're trying to set up you put a 34 on under EMA settings you'd set one to the low of the candle one to the high of the candle and one to the close of the candle so what you end up with is three EMA set to the low the high and the close that will give you your channel very very simple concept okay so if you wanted a 21 you simply set in your three EMAs to a 21 then one set to the high low and the close that's how we set up a channel 
so uh, 21s will work I like the 34s but most of you know the 34 I usually just have a 34 EMA it's nice so if you're trading 34 EMA bounces as long as a candle uh, or the brick whatever you're trading comes in within that channel all right and it reverses back out of a channel there is your trade entry as long as it's a trending if you're trading a trending strategy a trending 34 likewise you can do it with a 21 so whatever really tickles your fancy whichever you prefer I've tried your method of tick or range however I see price action more naturally on the 32nd if with a five but don't get nothing wrong with that as long as it works okay Paul so it really comes down to whatever works now most of you are aware that if I'm trading with a tick or a time-based chart I like to have my entry chart three times lower than my anchor so I would prefer to have an entry chart of say five minute and an anchor chart of a 15 minute or my entry chart being a three minute and I would then have a nine minute now there's a reason for that I tend to find that if you say have uh, a 89 bounce on my three minute you quite often see you've got a 34 EMA bounce on the nine minute just have a look at that now if you're trading range charts I like to have it as 1.75 that just works well play around with what works for you but I tend to find that say if my entry chart was say four ticks four range I would want to multiply that by 1.7 times to set up my range chart or the closest figure to make that work uh, if I'm using a uh, a Renko I simply will just have it two times higher so if, say if I've got a four tick Renko brick I will have a eight tick Renko anchor chart but play around you know what in the end trade is close enough is good enough right uh, although, although I've had years of experience I realize that most of his experience is it of a losing trader let's reframe that Paul you've had a lot of great learning experiences in the past and traders this is very very important you've heard me talk about the psychological damage that is done to most traders okay uh, we've got to reframe the losses that we've had the money maybe we put into education or the books we've purchased or the courses uh, the money we've blown rather than saying okay rather than continually flogging yourself so okay I've had a lot of expensive learning experiences what can I learn from this right so what we're looking at is we converting it into a compelling constructive question what can I learn from this how can I use this okay um, rather than something that strips away I don't want to say our dignity but I think you get the general drift okay the questions that we ask ourselves for an example why is it that I can why is it that I'm so fat why is it that I can never lose weight now instead of how can I lose weight and have fun doing it at the same time can you hear the difference in the questions the questions that we ask ourselves can make a massive difference to either disempowering or they're empowering traders do not underestimate the power of questions and the questions that we ask ourselves as we trade so Paul hopefully that answers those questions for you now here's another question for a number of questions here from Steph uh, that you wanted me to cover how to avoid getting out of a trade prematurely because you're afraid of losing when you see it hit your target after your close of trade now with nearly all of these it really comes down to discipline self-confidence believing in your strategies and this is where you've got to really spend time uh, in the trading psychology folder and on the NLP now really if you don't trust yourself if you don't trust your trading uh, you shouldn't be trading live yet and I think you all know this it's very very important that you draw a line in the sense okay the past is the past I'm now going to use that as a learning experience moving forward I'm no longer going to make these mistakes if you do okay let me slap myself once let's move on now in the trading psychology area there's a little document there on the 21 day challenge go and study that I think it's uh, what is it here it's a four page document you know study how to overcome bad habits we've got some 
books there on overcoming bad habits okay bad habits no more there's um, breaking the habit of being yourself there's a, a number of great books there, and you can google this sort of stuff once again the markets going to be here in three and six months traders it's no good moving forward with your trading if you're going to continually self sabotage yourself because in the end you can say stuff this this is too bloody hard I'm no longer doing it all right man up step up to the plate and decide here on in I'm now going to be a winning trader even if I need to re-educate myself I need to work on this so how to avoid getting out of a trade because you're afraid of losing when you see it hit your target after you've closed the trade gaining confidence through sim trading where you, where you can show you're building your account over a period of time how to avoid holding on to a losing trade well bottom line is what does your trading plan say what are your clear-cut trading rules they should be there in front of you you will not break those rules moving forward if yourself you have to if you do you need to punish yourself this is where the NLP books come into it right so you need to work on this how to avoid being too greedy remember traders trading is a business how to avoid revenge trading all of this is covered by Mark Douglas in his couple of books and other books here on trading traders if you're really struggling in this area because the day trader fast track strategies work what you need to do is stop doing your back testing focus on your head stuff for a week or two or three all right focus on getting your head right gaining confidence rather than trying to spread yourself too thin and do too many things most of you have heard of a concept called ego depletion ego depletion is where at the end of the day we're exhausted with our decision making ability now ego depletion is not the ego it's um, and you can actually google the concept of ego depletion it is where at the end of the day you're more likely to make mistakes we only have so many des decisions but we can make it in a day before we become mentally exhausted and this is very very true with trading and um, quite often I find that uh, traders that are doing say six hours of back testing a day they make more and more mistakes get more and more frustrated the more time they spend doing this so it's very very important stop all your back testing and focus here on the head stuff uh, the the late great Zig Ziglar used to say we all need a checkup from the neck up because we all suffer from a hardening of the attitudes let me say it again we all need a checkup from the neck up because we all suffer from a hardening of the attitudes particularly if you're an older trader or you've made a lot of mistakes in the past draw a line in the sand and work on the head stuff very very important and I've pretty much already mentioned this is the disciplined trader if you don't have the hard book I've got the PDF the hardcover book we've got the PDF there uh, and as he uh, Mark Douglas talks about and then Steph this gets back to your questions there he states the best traders have developed an edge and more importantly they trust their edge now your edge traders is understanding how the t20 works when the 8 crosses through the 34 or if you're willing to or if you're trading a really great trending market the 8 crosses through say the 21 you want to note that because that generally particularly on the 34 is a start of a new trend and particularly when you're taking these in the direction of a trend on the anchor chart that's one of the edges and when you start to trust those okay um, you'll stop making a lot of the other mistakes and remember focus on one two or three now the reason I say usually three strategies as an example your t1 the super scalper uh, the t2 the slingshot the 34b uh, even the uh, the rule of one these are all the t25 even these are all trend following strategies you have a retracement and a trend continuation and the reason I usually say you can learn uh, two or three of those because they're all little pullbacks and trend continuation they just might have slightly different rules and some will qualify at the same time so stick with those okay now as uh, and getting back to Mark Douglas's book here's what he says Steph you need to start as small as possible then gradually allow yourself to grow into greater and greater amounts of marketing information 
why I think of it this is really important and I meant to bring this up what is your compelling future now the reason I say that is um, uh, it's a biblical saying and it says this that where there is no vision the people will perish let me say that again and I'm no scholar by the way on the scriptures on the Bible but it's of course something that's thousands of years old where there is no vision the people will perish and it's very true when it comes to trading or any business activity when you've got an incredible vision for your future the financial independence is going to mean for you and your family uh, for the trips you can take the new homes you can buy or giving up the uh, the job that you currently have and by the way Joe B job do you know what that stands for the word job just over broke <laughs> that's what it stands for just over broke you can break the cycle of having a uh, just over broke by mastering the art of day trading and you can do that by creating your goals by having your goals on the wall your photos uh, you know the real estate that I want to buy some more real estate in the US I want to buy I've got these um, uh, some, a beautiful home in Malibu I've got to what seven or eight of these multi-million dollar homes that I want to buy in Malibu and I've got them up here up here on the wall uh, some of you may aware I've got um, uh, four adult children and uh, grandchildren live in a, by the way I have seven kids 13 grandchildren uh, four of my adult kids live in the US and so uh, my wife and I we used to live in Santa Monica we want to be traveling backwards and forwards with the states from the states and here so you know we've got it here on our wall what our goals are and trading will deliver that for you so what are the goals that you've got and all of a sudden when you've got that compelling future it makes it easier to stick to the rules and make it it makes it easier and Tony Robbins in the book awaken the giant within he talks a lot uh, a lot about that he also talks about in his very first book called uh, unlimited power I think it was called his first book so study that and as I mentioned earlier maybe that's something you need to focus on more than your trading for a few weeks right really get that right what you want to do is become an expert at just one particular type of behavior pattern that repeats itself with some degree of frequency for an example ascending and descending triangles they're a fantastic setup right and you'll see them in every market I must say every market uh, in on say CL you'll see three or four maybe five good ascending or descending triangles set up every day with some good wedges there once again the market is coiling they're great trades to become an expert choose one simple trading system that identifies a pattern all right what is an ascending or descending triangle preferably one that is mechanical instead of mathematical so very very important you spend your time on these things traders uh, and and I think before we go to the charts this is what I want to say here your life only gets better when you get better your life only gets better when you get better once again traders you need to work harder on yourself than what you do on your trading so let's now go to the charts and what I'm now going to do is cover some questions that have come up from members specifically and let me just get myself organized here okay so the first one this is from uh, Andrew Andrew just uh, Andrew here uh, is talking about here trading the one minute the three minute and the five minute okay now the one minute uh, on the ES or on the any market you can get a lot of false single signals a lot more what we call noise now let me just do something here I just want to show you this workspace now what I've got here is a t2 we can see we've got my long-term stochastic is rising short terms come down and kicked up here okay I can enter on the close of this one minute candle now if I had have entered here just for me to say where would my stop be I would like to put it one tick below here so if we look at this here this entry look over here at my three minute chart we can see here that the 200 on the three minutes in a nice uptrend the 89 okay we've also just had a pivot bounce okay look at this here see I've got a pivot bounce here which is generally a good signal I've come down I've bounced off the pivot I've had my first pullback it's a t2 and in I go 
look at my five minute the 8 is above the 21 the 21 is above the 34 if we look at here the 8 is above the 21 it's above the 34 the 8 is above the 34 here you're not always going to have all of the EMAs line up exactly let's now go now we are in the globex session now traders so let's have a look at this now we can see here on the one minute this is my 200 EMA you can see them the 200s come up and it's what's happening here. this is what we call a 200 EMA bounce if we look over at the three minute chart which is uh, three times higher notice here we've had a 200 bounce here and I've got what have I got over here I've got an 89 bounce if I go over here it's a slight 34 on my five minute chart but it's a 200 and a 34 EMA bounce here notice here how I've got all of my longer term trend lines are heading down I come up have a bounce look at my three and my five minute I'm in a nice downtrend if you look at everything on the chart so you start looking at say the stochastics on on the uh, both of the higher time frames the MACDs you can become paralyzed by the amount of information that you need to process but what I am noticing and what's very very important I've got a 200 EMA bounce and I've got down trending uh, EMAs here now let me just quickly read the rest of your email again I think this is almost Andrew a perfect situation you said the price here the eights cross through we can see here and it's hitting on the 200 this may be even what you refer to but if we look over here on our anchor which is the three times higher then you got a five notice we're looking for downtrends and this we're looking for trading short only and this is one of the big thing traders we is learning and mastering patience this is one thing where many of us fall short when it comes to trading we lack the patience remember you know you only need to be targeting two to three hundred dollars a day per contract you trade and you make an enormous amount of money and just with that point what if you target initially only making fifty dollars then you go to sim making a hundred then you go back to sim increase it develop your confidence over a period of time now another question that Steph brings up here is hi Ray I hope, um, let's see if, if I've ever wondered if if I've ever suffered from a fear of missing out or over trading during your trading career if so how do I overcome these issues Steph absolutely so here's an idea for you traders if you said okay I want to make 10 trades a day and let's just say you're day trading during the New York session and on a lower time frame generally speaking you'll get at least one trade entry uh, every 15 minutes sometimes one every five minutes so break it down to say okay what if I only had two to three trade entries an hour to get my 10 trades in a day I need to be trading probably uh, let's just say here three trades an hour that's three hours a day and break it down that chunk it down okay I need three to four trades per hour now most of you are aware that I state that if you say trading the CL with multiple trade entries you're probably only going to be able to day trade CL but say if you'll focus on just trading the 34b you could probably do the ES the CL and maybe the NQ you could trade multiple markets with the one trade setup but very very important initially in your trading career be very conservative and if you're if you discovered you have got a fear of missing out or you're over trading okay you should not be live trading you need to punish yourself slap yourself around until you overcome that very very important because remember the psychological damage trader so break it down if you want to be doing and you hear me talk a lot about doing 20 trades a, a day let's break it down so if you're doing six an hour on average let's just say it's four uh, 20 trades it's five hours of trading is that realistic for you well it may be if you're looking for um, those four trades on two markets so just chunk down your expectations of how many trades you hope to be making per hour 
okay this is a question from uh, Merle uh, Merle uh, in reference to your thing here the why I'm dropping I notice on these days so I'm just traders I'll just go through this quickly on the days that the market is either going up or down strong trend there are continual divergence on the MACD the t25s t2s coming like crazy but there's also divergence usually I never take these on divergence so I've missed out on many trades okay big thing traders if you have a really strong trend whether it be an uptrend or a downtrend uh, you will find time and time again that your divergence trades will fail where you want to start to become more suspicious is after you have what I call three hills or three humps you're more likely to have divergence trades come off that is after say three divergence signals in a strong trend you're more likely to be heading towards a changing trend or a divergence trade that will trend or chart that, that, that will work out you have to remember that the market they say only trends 15 to 20 percent of the time that is only say one in five days where you have the market trend solidly in one direction so what you want to be looking for is to master the art of of um, uh, divergence trading is you want to be looking for massive angulation what you've got to be careful of is where you have a market where you've got and let me just try to find one here okay here's a really good example beware of counter trend trading in a tight channel okay now what you may find and you don't have it but by the way we're looking at the Renko here a, a two Renko on CL which can move very very fast so quite often during the uh, New York session you'll need to jump to a four Renko or a four tick brick with an eight brick for your anchor chart this works really well during the Globex session a two and a four during New York session you might go for a four and an eight now remember traders on my Google Drive there is a folder there uh, for Renko with some videos on it etc be very aware in taking or be aware of taking or even considering divergence trades when you have price action in a tight channel what you want to see is price action rally you want to look for a big V and after you have three or four of these particularly in a tight trend you're more likely to have a decent channel so what do you do well with these in a good trending market the uh, the percentages of the trend continuing are much higher than a divergence trade so here if we look at the rule of one you had one two three four possible entries okay now here you then formed a double top when you have these double tops and if you look down here I've now got clear-cut divergence the alarm bell should start to ring that possibly we've got a, a change in trend coming up so what do you do you've had one two three uh, trades in this uh, channel what you may choose to do is to be conservative and set it out if you wish price action comes down what have I got here I've now got an 89b so on your question there with divergence uh, and lack of confidence do your figures over 100 trades um, uh, do it, do, uh, let's see here am I supposed to just take the setups as they come at me and have more winners and losers do you have any suggestions yes in tight channels very steep here you want to be very very cautious of your counter trend trades until you've had three or four good waves the best thing traders is to stay with the trend okay trade with a trend until you're consistently profitable now here we've got here uh, is one of our we've as you know I love my ascending and descending triangles here we've got one here now it's not a game of perfect but we can see we've got a nice breakout price is starting to coil I want you to welcome these just be very careful when you start to see your EMAs going sideways another signal is look at my long-term stochastic notice how it's in what I call no man's land see how it's in the middle here now look over at your anchor chart always look at your anchor chart what is the direction here? it's still trending up so the chances are I am more likely to have a breakout to the long side than what I am to the short side and by the way we call this an ascending triangle look at my anchor chart everything's heading up right it's all looking good now 
I also recommend that you start drawing new trend lines in on your anchor chart very simply expand your window on a regular basis what's happening here and mark it up mark up your trend lines on your anchor chart you can do what we call micro trend lines a micro trend line is when you're doing a very small trend line okay you might be doing well I'm just trying to think like here's a micro okay you and then you've got your longer term trend lines okay when you're starting to look at these I've got a number of touches I'm more likely to break down here right most of you know that I love to use fractal points to draw my trend lines now this is my anchor chart I I'm really looking for trend direction on my anchor chart and one other thing I'm looking for my 1d and 2d's now as a reminder a 1d is when I have a divergence on my anchor chart and a 2d is when I have it on both my anchor and my entry now if we look at this here for an example let me just uh, do this for you where are I I'm just going to pull this over here because I want to show you this now look at this here notice how I've got divergence here there's one and it's hard for you to see but I've actually got divergence so I've got double divergence this makes it a 2d which increases the probabilities dramatically of having a divergence trade so getting back to the question there when you start to see 1d's come up maybe that's your tool to say okay no more with trend following trades because when you get a 1d or a double divergence divergence on both your anchor and your entry okay and look at this here we had one there then you had divergence again let me just go back here okay notice here we had divergence again here and look at this I've got divergence and divergence again always be prepared for a bounce on your major EMAs okay but here's one that's a 2d okay and it dramatically increases the probability so merely that may be one of the rules that you look at a 1d and a 2d to be very cautious hopefully that then answers that question okay uh, really important make sure you jot this down trade and by the way I wouldn't normally have both the stop and flip here uh, and the parabolic you only need one uh, and remember it if you're using the 8 EMA if so if you're trading here let me just uh, disable this here uh, using eight that's all you really need so you staying in this trade until you get a close on or below the 8 EMA below or through it is your more conservative but you pick up these big runners right so you can do really well now what I wanted to show you here and for some reason that disappeared off the chart but what we had down here was an overshoot now notice here traders we've got a 200 EMA overshoot but look over here on the anchor chart what did I have I've got an overshoot on the 200 here but it's basically an 89 and 200 EMA bounce now it doesn't matter whether you're trading Forex stocks or futures traders you'll see this happen time in day in day out now if I took this overshoot and Marcelo this is for you where would I put my stop I'd like to see it under here now if the market is taken off what do we do well here if you're say using the ATR stop and flip and let me just put that back on what you can actually do is use that for your stop that is I can say okay and <laughs> for some reason it's come back on here there it is 89 and 200 on the AC and this is something where when you jot these down on your notepads or on your screen it's good to go back and review so here I can say okay I'll put my stop one tick below the low here so you can use these for stop placement so rather than having my stop one or two ticks here I can put it here now here if I have shorted here even though I wouldn't have taken this trade my stop could be here and then it continues if I had decided to use the ATR stop and flip here I could have put my stop one tick here maybe saved one or two ticks if I did get stopped out now remember it can come at a price which means sometimes they can be too sensitive and you can get some whipsawed but that's where you just want to be cautious now what I did want to show you uh, is another one this is another really good example so let's now go back over here on the anchor chart now this is a four brick uh, and this is a two brick 
now it doesn't matter whether you're trading tick time based charts range it's the same concept here notice here on my uh, on the anchor chart I've come down I've bounced on the pivot I've also got an 89 bounce and a the almost to 200 I'm within a couple of ticks so this is what I call a 200 it's a V trade notice a big steep move it's a t3 it's a pivot bounce and a 200 bounce on the anchor chart right these can be very high probability counter trend trades but traders mark them up and you'll master these over a period of time okay we've got a nice little wedge formation here remember when you see this what's happening traders pressure is building mark them up don't fear them mark them up but you need to do 100 you need to master the pattern traders be kind to yourself um, give yourself time on these patterns okay so I'm, all I've done is taken the highs here another little formation here of a triangle okay then finally I'll get the breakout now it could go in any direction right now uh, and I didn't actually what time was it no it wasn't actually trading here but it broke to the short side sometimes of the triangle you never know which way it's going to go but what you do know price is coiling I am going to get a decent breakout to one direction or another uh, here we've got another run we've got an ascending triangle finally it broke okay went up and we had a nice move let me just go back here uh, now another little tip I want to give once again stocks futures Forex same thing price action goes up and I have a bounce here on the 200 look over at your anchor it's almost an 89 bounce comes down I get a 34 B it comes up I've got a slight 200 overshoot it's now an 89 bounce on my anchor chart I've also got divergence and I've got divergence here on my anchor chart what is that it's a 2d one divergence two divergence and away it goes nicely thank you very much this then forms into a t10 see the, the long-term stochastic falling short term comes up and kicks up now moving along here's there any more in this chart I wanted to show you let me just quickly see okay uh, just a couple of comments here I had here on this chart this is from yesterday is use a tick chart if you're new to Renko or to range maybe be looking at a tick chart as well because sometimes it can move really quickly and you might use a time-based chart remember one of the advantages you've got uh, with um, tick or range or a time-based chart uh, is you can have tick countdowns you can have time-based countdowns so you can see when the candle is going to close that can help now there are types of and I don't have one for trade station where you can see where the range is but where the candle is going to form on the on the Renko I believe you can get it for ninja trader I don't have them unfortunately this here what is this here I've got notice here on my anchor chart price section I've got a nice overshoot and what have I got on my anchor chart it's a 200 bounce great counter trend move now and this is yesterday I remember marking this up live okay what I had here is this was another 200 overshoot if you look at this here on your anchor bang these are a great trade overshoot bounce on the anchor had a V trade comes up and what have I got I've now got an ascending triangle usually we would have a breakout more higher probability to the long side when you've got these ascending triangles and usually you'll break the long side but not always and you see we had a nice break to the short side and the comment I had here this was during the Globex session my comment there was where's the high of the day in actual fact there was still another 10 ticks above here but always keep an eye on that where's the high of the day when you start to get these triple tops start to form are we at the high of the day um, just keep an eye on things like that now this is a question we're nearly up to an hour so I'll quickly uh, cover this this is a question from Kate just about um, uh, what initial capital for beginners sort of future trader have what would I recommend okay Kate so you really need to have a minimum of four thousand dollars in your account um, to trade futures and the reason being is this my average stop is around the 70 to 80 dollar mark 
okay now if you can say okay the, the worst case for a normal trader this is the worst case I'm going to risk is 2% traders when I trade Forex or sorry futures uh, I risk 0.5 you can do that when you get a larger account 0.5 but if you're a normal trader um, uh, and let's just say here you're willing to take a high risk 2% is the maximum and so what you then want to do is what is 2% of four thousand dollars it's eighty dollars if you are trading a higher time frame with a higher stop or a larger stop you'll need more money in your account when you're trading a smaller time frame if we say if we take it here and you're tucking your stop just under here you'll find that's probably about a six or seven tick stop which is sixty to seventy dollars and your four dollars in commission that's seventy four dollars okay so you're under your two percent no problem but if you're trading a much higher time frame and you're going to tuck your stop under this swing low right you may need to have a higher stop a larger stop it may be hundred and fifty dollars which means you need a larger account so hopefully that makes sense so if you're going with a maximum of two percent risk per trade which is say eighty dollars you need to have a minimum of four thousand dollars so hopefully Kate that answers that question for you now this is a question from John just about waiting for can you stay in from one move from t20 now see this here of the eight crossing through this brown line here this is the 21 okay here's my entry here if I'd have waited for a cross of the 34 instead of getting in here it would have been here so only a one sort of tick difference really in this case now can you stay until you get another crossover which would have been over here yes you can the problem is if you're in a choppy market you can get chopped around a lot so here you would have had an entry here you've got another entry here now you had one here but notice we formed a double top we've also got here notice how my long-term stochastic starting to fall away and that's where I marked up where's the high of the day so you just want to be more cautious on this one but if you had been waiting for a cross of a t20 you could have crossed here or here so there's multiple ways but I think trading from one t20 to another uh, it just there are times when it can just be too choppy and um, I think it'll be more harmful to your, your, your health <laughs> now just uh, just before we close off on this one traders I just want to bring this up uh, is here this is a danger zone when you start to see your EMAs converging like this particularly for 200 the 200 EMA on both your entry and anchor can be a very very dangerous EMA I've been chopped up so many times over the years on the 200 just be very very cautious now notice here that the 34 the 21s crossed above the 200 so it's starting to look like an uptrend okay if we look over here and remembering of course you're looking on the far right hand you wouldn't see all of this all right and notice here we're right on the 200 what you may choose to do is to be conservative and just sit this out traders these can be real danger areas now if and as you gain more confidence you can start to see the 8 is above the 21 uh, and above the 34 here and I can see my long-term stochastics rising I may be willing to jump in on this I'm now above the 21 but just be aware of when you see these EMAs uh, starting when they're horizontal they're high risk what you're looking for is a fanning of the EMAs notice here we're starting to see a fanning here and my long-term stochastic is rising we're now breaking again above the 21 sorry above the 200 my apologies here we've now come down we've had a 200 bounce we're now getting 200 bounces uh, higher probability that once again you'd want your entry down below here under this 200 but these areas are a higher risk area now if we come along here a little further okay now we're starting to get true fanning of the EMAs this is a much better entry notice the fanning of the EMAs here one other thing you always want to be looking for is where are my pivots because remember we'll quite often particularly with the R1 and R2 and S1 and S2 you'll head very high probability you're going to head to your pivot and bounce on the pivot so if say for an example I had an entry here and my pivot was there I'd be very cautious of that trade 
all right because quite often you'll get a bounce then it'll come up and test it again so you just want to be aware of that all right now this gets back to the divergence trades here one wave two waves you had divergence there but you see you would have been stopped on that one there then you got one wave two wave and third wave finally that comes off and if we look at this point here look over at the anchor chart notice here how I've also got some slight divergence here on my anchor chart so I've now got my second clear cut divergence and I've got divergence on the anchor chart and then it comes back down so traders will wrap this Q&A session up it's over an hour and five minutes remember it doesn't matter what market you trade uh, the strategies ideas are applicable to all time frames and all markets thank you traders